Hi everybody, welcome to the Strong Fit Podcast. I think it's 192, 193, one or the other. Getting close to 100. Getting close to 200. So today we're going to speak about the new protocol. So we have the uh, new, well, the new protocol is the same protocol, but... Uh, same, same, but different. Yeah, yeah, same, same, but different. Uh, it's, uh, this one is more thorough, is more, um, there's more stuff in it. Yeah, we've been experimenting with more, more things, things with <laughs> more stuff, and so we want to share those results. And there's also some aspect, as I progress into the whole thing, there's some aspect that then needs to be um, maybe not changed, but furthered, right? There, there, there's some new ideas that I found very fascinating. And a few things that I saw instinctively by doing it, by trying that now have a better scientific basis so i wanted to uh, talk about this as well so the level up of the protocol right we, it's a level up really it's a rpg game and then we level up every time so this one will be the most uh, comprehensive yet it's starting on april 15th you can find it on mighty networks and all that stuff i'll put it on the website as well anyway so what are we going to put into it so first of all we're going to put fasting because you've been trying you've been playing with that so we ha like i eat a lot i don't like being hungry during the day personally so that's why i don't like fasting it takes my energy away but i think it's more a freeze mode because i don't like being hungry than it is a fasting problem fasting can be used very very well and that's what we've been trying with janina who had much better much 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 better results with the fasting oh, yeah. so explain because it was interesting for you it worked really well yeah. she's the leanest she's at 60 five and a half kilos right now which is the leanest she's been at that weight in a long time when i met you you yeah. were at 62 which was too small for you she's gained yeah. a lot of muscle but is as lean honestly as i remember her at 62 except four kilos later so uh, four kilos on muscle on that frame is a sh it's almost 10 percent it's a huge thing yeah so um i with 60s uh, this, this is the leanest i've ever been yeah in, in general, I think even when I was at 62, I think I'm leaner. Well, very lean at 62. Yeah, but, but I you carry yeah. so much more. Yeah, you didn't have muscle like your upper body. You have muscle like you carry a lot of muscle. And you have to understand at the time uh, when Jenna was 62, she wasn't even sprinting because it was during the um, COVID. the COVID. So she wasn't sprinting. She was doing just, you know, 30 minutes of cardio here and there. Right now we're talking about three CrossFit workouts a day because she's a good crossfitter so it's three sessions with strength with stuff yeah. and she's at uh, 65 60 C kilos very very lean so the, the fasting has yeah. been working really well so and, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so it happened a bit by accident honestly because we went to we we were, were in brazil we went to the u.s and honestly i was like i don't want to eat anything <laughs> everything was sweet uh yeah and and, uh, uh, and yeah. she just didn't like the the sweet taste everywhere she just didn't like so it's so like yeah. all right yeah. i don't like sweet and uh we were staying with with people who cooked really nice dinner so i was like let me just stick to dinner and i would eat like some some salad or some so during the day and then slowly but surely i went into uh less food during the day and then i uh ended up in holland and i was just angry mm -hmm. <laughs> and i was like nah i'm not eating i'm on hunger strike <laughs> yeah pretty much and so, so we were like well i might as well try fasting yeah, but and, uh, uh, yeah. yeah so it's been like six se no seven weeks i think in total but what was like very that. interesting is that she got a, v a great mental boost out yeah. of it so i'll, I'll let yeah. you explain well yeah so i'm just saying that mm -hmm. Because as I got, um, it's helped me a lot with. So you clarity. can tell, like, this muscle everywhere, right <laughs> there. I mean, like, it's pecs, pecs, <laughs> CrossFit, baby. Did, huh? Yeah, she's very lean. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what I noticed, and especially when I've in the first week when I started. You know, like, you look like you have fake boobs on the internet. When I she doesn't, I but it's funny. <laughs> yeah, genetics, baby, genetics. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so you started. Oh yeah, you had six. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I was at sixty. 768 mm -hmm. when we got to Seattle and um, at first it gave me like a sort of freak out because I was not eating and then I was getting hungry but I was not hungry and then you know it was weird so it was almost like my sister was trying to trick me into eating but she's normal when you start yeah when you start anything new honestly and yeah. after th that that normal. went away because I would still have a little bit of food during the day and then when we got to LA I had like one weird workout where I didn't eat and I was training and out of the sudden I wanted a banana like really bad but I, I couldn't do anything anymore 
And I was like, this is not hunger. This can't be, I can't be that hungry. That yeah, I Christian, can't she had wait. banana, she was fine. Yeah. So, I, yeah. so I had the banana and I was fine. And I was like, I, I could not be this hungry and then not continue yeah. eating, right? It's weird. It's like a, it's like my body mm -hmm. is almost trapping me into, into eating, even though I don't need to eat. Let's get to the point. All right, I get to the point. Anyway, um, when I went that past that, I found like a sort of, really relaxed state where I didn't feel like I was depending on food, food. as much. Cognitively speaking, how did you feel overall? I feel a lot more sharp, but also everything is a lot more intense, especially in the beginning. I can't tell you that. So <laughs> it's like... I agree. It's, it's almost like how long can, you, can I handle the intensity more than how hungry do I get? Yeah. So at some point, the so intensity... So how crazy does she get, is what she's saying. So intensity. Yeah. Intensity. Yeah. <laughs> so how crazy... <laughs> 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 I mean, so yeah, fasting is working really well in that sense. Now. I mean <laughs> no, but it's like how much intensity... Whatever, it's I you're happier like that, right? Yeah, because it's, you, it's do when you you're... feel more capable? Yeah, because I have less signals. My stomach doesn't hurt as much anymore. Yep. Because that's a problem I always had is that my stomach would hurt and so that is almost gone because there's no signals and my body seems more peaceful because there's not like constant like this. Right, and, that, and that, uh, this is something so we'll talk about a lot uh, during the, the protocol um, uh, module we're going to do is that is the, that, that thing of signals. Uh, like I use fasting with my clients, for example, when they had like a, you know, a bachelor party or they just had a cheat day and then they feel like shit. We use fasting a lot. Why? Because it resets the signals. When you eat all the time, you're in digestion all the time. There's a, there's a signal from your stomach coming at you constantly. Um, there's a trade-off there where I don't like feeling hungry. It puts me in freeze because I just don't like the idea. But at the same time, having a constant talk with your stomach can be overwhelming. So in the case yeah. of Janina, it works better to... Uh, to not have the signal. So, and in that case, fasting works very well. And so that means that, you, and by the way, there's not uh, something else I noticed is it makes your dinner an experience every yeah. time. Yeah, so now, now it's like, I want to have dinner, but it's working very I want well, to, fasting. I want to, yeah, but I want to relax into yeah. dinner. I want to take a shower. I want to sit down. You have I your rituals. Cook, and I want to yeah. take like an hour to eat and I want, don't want to eat like really fast. I want to just eat. And which is better anyway and yeah right? just make it more like a, a thing so right I which she wasn't doing before so it's interesting right like yeah. you would think being hungry makes you go in and nuts no on the contrary imagine Janina want to have an experience out of dinner and she literally eats for an hour straight by the way yeah i eat a lot and that's a problem i made in holland because uh, i was a bit angry at the world so i was like Slightly. i'm not eating so i didn't eat for like two days and yeah, we had to have like come kind of an argument on the face on the video call where they're like, no, you're having dinner. Because yeah. at some point you go so crazy that <laughs> <laughs> just you, honey. No, but I went so crazy because I didn't yeah. have the protein at night. So it's yeah. very important that I have the protein at night because that's as soon as I don't have the, the protein or not the right protein. Because when I just mm -hmm. notice with different types of protein, there's a different type of effect. Yep. If I don't have the protein that I I want at that moment. I don't recover the same, I don't sleep the same, and if I yeah. don't eat at all, my body keeps yeah, just no, that's on, a, yeah, that's a mistake. and I yeah. just... You I can't do it, yeah, yeah you'll you crash. So you'll crash. I mean, the, this deep, deep inside of crash. But the overall, the fasting has been very, very positive for you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. right now, you're training three times a day like before, and it has yeah. no effects on strength. You just did a 12 minutes um, imam of two reps at 100 kilo back squat. So yeah. 24 reps, I, I mean 25, because you failed that second one when I was there. <laughs> uh, she failed a less rep uh, when I was there. Um, the, uh, but so you did 25 reps at 100 kilos on the back squat, you know, in 12 minutes, yeah, in 30 minutes. And, it's and been it wasn't an issue. Yeah. yeah, because in Holland, I did the same thing with 90 kilos for 20 minutes, which yeah. was really good too. Um, yeah, so she's progressing so like yeah. that. So it's not affecting strength level or anything. It's keeping her, but it's going to keep her around the 65, 66 kilos, which I think is her body weight anyway. Yeah. That's where she's lean, strong, fast. So there's that too, but right? I so if she was to gain muscle, it'd be a different conversation. It's not a full fast because if I train on a day, I do have like, for example, two bananas and some. Melon. But we're going to talk about that why. We, so this is something I want to explain. That I'm, we're going to go at on the module is even fasting, we're going to break it with fruits. And uh, I will explain uh, that's very important. And there's, the, there's a point to that that I think is necessary that I want to explain. Yeah. But yeah, so the fasting has been very uh, beneficial. I think this will be a, 
my thing. I, I really, because yep. I've been at it for mm -hmm. seven weeks and I feel... Well, you know how you know, you're training. You're yeah. training really well right now, very strong. Yeah, and uh, I feel like, it's not like it's I'm saying it. like, oh, I want to go back to eating. Like, not at all. Yeah. I don't have... Right, that because I'm there like was that problem. Is people were... were, were um, forcing yourself into fasting. Yeah, they were not fasting. They were starving themselves for 12 hours and then jump on food and lose their shit. So then you just eating in 12 hours what you would eat on 16. And I'm sure it has some effects on the liver, the kidneys, some beneficial effects, but mentally it's not good. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. She just, you know, like the dinner becomes an experience. There's a way to do this that I think is very important. Yeah. So, and uh, on the other aspect, uh, me on my side, like, so I've been talking about fruits, right? Uh, for a while now that uh, being in Brazil, I mean, it's because we are outside and, and things like this, but I've been finding that adding fruits was uh, beneficial to the protocol, um, staying away from it. And that's interesting because then since uh, it's been a week now, I've uh, been introducing honey again. I'm going to explain why. And that has been very beneficial for me. I used to do that. I used to train with honey. Right, always like, all right, is honey sugar or things, uh, you know, but honey is sugar, so how come you're putting in it? So I'm going to explain this part and then I will also uh, go through the Paul Anderson diet because you'll find it very interesting where we all meet in the same place. So why am I putting honey? So there was a guy named Paul Saladino, I think his name is. He's the carnivore uh, MD on, uh, on Instagram and YouTube. And he was so a carnivore diet guy, right? Carnivore diet means what? Means meat, organ meats, animal fats, and salt. And that was it, right? And um, he went at it uh, for a long time. The reason he was on the carnivore diet really is because he has eczema. So he has an autoimmune disease and he's very, very sensitive to inflammation. So first of all, I found that aspect fascinating because we've been talking about like anxiety, inflammation being the same thing right inflammation being like a, you know a sympathetic drive just like anxiety is so right away when i when i was thinking about affective immunology i realized the impact of the protocol on inflammation and therefore on anxiety since they're the same thing and then that we should focus on that focusing on inflammation so right away that tells you like maybe dairy products can work for some people and not others so anything that brings too much inflammation has to go away so what about veggies we're going to get to that but uh, Paul Saladino was talking about the fact that he was a, uh, at some point also a keto guy and everything. But then going into hard keto, he was too much in keto. Like I put the, um, his talk uh, on the Mighty Networks. I suggest you uh, you go watch it. Um, he was he was very interesting because he, he said like he was actually better at a keto uh, a low keto, so like you know around one ish instead of three, for example. Um, He's, when he was on full keto, he didn't sleep that well, five, six hours a night only, which is interesting because that's something you see uh, with people at the beginning of the protocol, right? And then eventually he started to put the fruits back in and got a lot better. Once he put the fruits back in and the honey, he ended up going, his testosterone went back up to seven, 800 level, which is normal, but everything went well. The eczema went, uh, started to quiet down and uh, things like this. So he ended up with a diet that he has now that is um, meat, organ meat, animal fat. Uh, salt usually is for the high keto people, he doesn't need that anymore, and fruits. So which is my version of the protocol. So I found it interesting. So only difference really between the way he eats and the way I eat is I put the veggies in and uh, I get my protein at night, not during the day. So during the day I can do organ meat or animal fat. Because organ meat is fat, right? Fat, mostly, yeah. It's uh, 80% fat for 20% protein. So it depends on the organ meat, but I don't, add, I don't seem to have uh, an issue with that. It depends uh, a little bit on stuff. And so, uh, but the interesting part for me is was why he put the, the fruits back in. So what he was showing is he walked around with a glucose monitor, like the one you have 24 seven, right? And he was sharing that even when he had the fruits, he had the spike of insulin, but then the, the spike were coming back down to normal. So that means that his glucose levels were outside of the spikes were actually the same. So that putting, um, putting sugar back in the sense of fruits back into his diet did not make him go around with elevated sugar, uh, glucose level outside of the spikes. And what he was explaining is, is actually his insulin resistance got better in the sense of because he did not have any carbs, he wasn't very good at producing insulin, which is a fantastic concept that you only get good at what you do. 
And that rang true to me right away. True to me right away that because he wasn't having any sugar, he did not have any insulin spike. Therefore, he was in a way insulin resistant in the sense of that he was not capable of producing the insulin necessary for the whole body to function correctly. So, by introducing fruits and insulin spikes, he trained his body to be better at producing and handling insulin. That's a fantastic idea, actually, which uh, makes complete sense. Yeah. Makes complete sense. Right? But he did it with fruits, not with chili sugar. Therefore, the glucose level did not stay high. He did not get inflammation out of it. So he got the best part of that aspect. Because fruits are not starch. Starch are not sucrose, sugar, whatever they put in it. Because the more you go toward the sucrose, the more inflammation you're going to get, which is what we're trying to get away from. And with the fruits, it won't happen. Why? Because fructose is not sucrose, which I've been saying on the protocol for a long time now. It's not the same. And fruits are not the same as a man-made sweet stuff. And so he even put honey into it because he considered honey a bit to be like a, like a fruit because bees make it. And so everybody's going to go, well, honey is just sugar. It's fructose and sucrose. And actually, that is not true. And that's the part also that fascinates me with this is that argument. People want a deterministic world to the point where they can break things down in little pieces. So the, the whole idea of the deterministic uh, laws of Newton or whatever is that you can predict the future. If you were to know everything that is to be known right now, you could predict the future. And that's not true. That's why quantum mechanics showed us. But that deterministic idea is still there. People want certainty. They want to be able to decompose things, functional segregation, into small pieces to explain the larger pieces, the Lego theory if you want. And everything is built out of small blocks and therefore <coughs> the problem, and this is a problem we face <coughs> with quantum mechanics, is you cannot know everything there is to be known. So let me go into a philo philosophical rabbit hole on this one. I got 10 minutes, good. So the deterministic idea is if we could know everything there is to be known, we could predict the future correctly. It's uh, Lavoisier who said that. And, uh, and this is where quantum, mechani quantum mechanics uh, arrived. And for example, like uh, why Einstein say uh, God does not play dice. It's because there is a randomness into quantum mechanics that left Einstein very deeply troubled. What is funny is there's something called the uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics that says that you cannot uh, know the position and the velocity of a particle at the same time. You either know the position exactly or you know the velocity exactly. You cannot know both. It's an uncertainty principle. You don't have to understand why. It's just welcome to quantum mechanics. So that means that God has a sense of humor and made sure that we will never be able to know everything there is to know about the whole world. Therefore, we will never be able to predict the future. God has a sense of humor, turns out. So, and it's the same thing for those types of things. No, you cannot break down uh, uh, honey into fructose and sucrose and think you understand the effects of it. There's a way that honey is made that changes the component itself. And this is something in nutrition I think we're missing constantly. We don't understand that plants, meat, honey are made of living things and therefore the nature is different than simply breaking it down in small pieces. The total is more than the sum of all parts kind of thing. And so there is a study that is on a strong feed vault that was showing that they gave mice fructose in a powder form versus honey, right? Honey is mostly fructose, but there's also glucose and sucrose in it, right? So they gave fructose even, so technically less sucrose than honey. And the mice were doing better on the honey than they were doing on the sucrose. On the sucrose, they had oxidative stress. What is that? Uh, Pro-oxidation, inflammation, inflammatory measures that they did not get on the honey. Honey was a antioxidant compound, whereas fructose was a pro-oxidant compound. So we can go in free radicals and everything. It's all in the study. It's fascinating. We're showing that the mice had a positive response to honey where they had a negative response to fructose from an inflammatory perspective. It was fructose, starch, honey. 
because honey is not just fructose or just sucrose, it's the way the bee made it. There's a food matrix that composes it that changes the way we process it because the gut flora reacts a certain way because of the probiotics in it, because of the way bees make it means that honey, no, it's not just sugar. So it's fascinating. It's not that simple. So we have that very deterministic, very, um, there's a name for it that escapes me at the moment, but um, reductive, that very reductive vision of uh, nutrition where it's just protein, just, 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 that. just like you said before, like the type of meat, the type of protein that you eat has to be based on what you feel because otherwise you won't digest it the same way. Your body is saying something. Because turn out chicken is not meat. Meat is not fish. It's just not the same, just like sucrose is not honey. So when I started to put the, the honey back in, I had a positive response right away, but not an inflammatory one. And so why did I put the honey back in? Because I was trying to get those insulin spikes that he was talking about, because there's a relationship between insulin and lactate. So I, have, uh, I had the, the honey during right before training with coffee and during training in order to going back to the first idea of the protocol which is you know a carnivore diet outside of training and uh, with some fruits here and there and uh, a shit ton of honey when i train which is exactly how i started the protocol it was either honey or it was chocolate milk but uh, honey being obviously healthier so it's funny because i ha we i end up with the same uh food as that guy except timing is where i added something he's doing it just all day where me i time it correctly i put the honey mostly uh, uh, during training i tried a little bit outside too but during the day i have fats organ meats and animal fats and then fruits but that i i felt so since i've been here that he, like cheese uh, it can be uh, well it's saturated fats in that case it can be technically it can be cheese i'm, I'm pretty sure the people on carnivore diet do not eat dairy product because they're all very sensitive to inflammation and dairy product can definitely do that so that's going to depend on the person but most of the time people that have like autoimmune diseases uh you know the skin like psoriasis eczema they have to stay away from dairies the lactose is can create a uh, it's a sugar can create a massive inflammatory response yeah, just, yeah. <coughs> right so that depends right so you have to find your fats from uh <coughs> fatty meats organ meat stuff like that where i can still do cheese i i'm dairy product in the sense of cheese cheese for example goat cheese it seems to be a lot better than cow cheese after that, we can go into the why, because also the cows are not as healthy as they're supposed to be. Like the, after that, mm -hmm. there's a number of things like that. But the, the key to all this is going to be two things. going to be, first of all, lowering the inflammatory response. Mm -hmm. right? So you're going to have to make sure you don't have stuff uh, that makes you inflamed. And then we're going to talk about veggies on that one. And then on the other side, you want those spikes of insulin, because insulin is necessary for a number of things. And there's a relationship between insulin and lactate, right? Uh, so you want, you don't want to be insulin resistant ever. It's been shown to just ruin your body. Uh, but there's two ways to be insulin resistant. Then there is having sugar all the time, or it, there is having sugar never. Both will make you insulin resistant. One will be because uh, you're having sugar all the time, and then you just can't produce insulin because your your you know your system just can't handle that much sugar anymore. You just overloaded the receptors completely, and then or, um, and destroyed your body pretty much. And then on the other side, you're insulin resistant in that sense because you're just not producing any, and your body sucks at producing and handling insulin, right? Which I find very interesting as a concept. So that would mean that the body is an arch, for example. Yeah. So. Um, how would someone know where to go with this with you mean protocol like, or yeah. with, so, um, how do you know that you need fasting? How do you know when, what type of organ meat you need or what type Right. Of so there's going to be two organs. answers to that. First of all, the fasting, I ser seriously, uh, suggest you go at it. If you're going to fast, you're going to, you're going to do it because you're having the results Janina is having, which means, uh, a great mental clarity. And a body that just, you know, the, sig the signals are quiet and it allows you to function better mentally. Mm 
that's a sign it's working for you. In my case, it just puts me in freeze because I don't like being hungry. It's more like, um, to me, it's almost like, it's a mental thing, almost. It's almost like I can't do what I want. And I don't do well with so that. So for me, it's the opposite because I'm like, who is food to decide when I sit down? Right. And me, it's like, <laughs> if I want to eat, I'm going to eat. Like, you don't tell me that I'm not eating. So, yeah, there, there's two, it's yeah, the same yeah. thing. It's just two ways of approaching it. I'd suggest you try fasting to see if you're having that approach to it, going like, no, I decide not food. I mean, it's like, yeah, well, I feel like eating, so I'm eating. Um, it's the same way. Right. I think it's, it's that, will you get benefits from uh, fasting? Yeah. Like, uh, we, we saw plenty of evidence, it, right? but don't force it. But we, we saw plenty of evidence that fasting is great for you. Kidneys, you know, because you're not always in a digestive thing, well, which is I, very good for you. That's what I uh, love so much is that I, not, that I feel less tired because I'm not constantly, yeah, constantly digesting. So, but that's the thing also on the other. So there is, that's what fasting brings some great thing, no questions. On the other side, if you're going to eat a lot, just make sure you don't eat all day. Have breaks. Eat every three hours, but not in between. Don't snack. That's what I would give on the other side is if you're not going to fast, but you don't want to be hungry, you need to be hungry at least once or twice a day, like hungry, hungry, like, oh my God. Like, so usually what I do, it's one of the steps is I'll have food during the day, but like, you know, two hours, usually three hours, no matter what. And then at four o'clock, I'd stop so that I get to dinner starving, like really hungry. And then dinner is better. Get to dinner hungry. That one, even if you want to eat before or whatever, okay, fine. Get to dinner hungry. That's a very, very important one. So fasting is even an easier way to do it. But so why am I making uh, Janina eat fruits during the day, break the fast with some fruits here and there? And then that's what I would suggest. That'll be on the protocol is for the insulin stuff, right? So like every so often, get a banana, get a spike of that insulin just to make sure that you're, you have the capacity to produce and handle insulin. It works better. It works better, right? Or some honey. You can have honey here and there. So before you train, get the honey, go train. Stuff like that works really well. It'll depend on people. It just depends a little bit how, how wired you are. If you're too wired, then get a banana, don't get honey. Me, I don't have a problem with it. For Janina right now, honey might be a bit much. Huh? But, um, right. so there, there's, a difference. <laughs> there's a difference between the two. And so when, we, when it gets to inflammation, well, then we can talk about veggies. Uh, doctor, That's no, he's not a doctor. I mean, is he a doctor? I think he's a doctor. Yeah, he's yeah a doctor. he is a doctor. He's, he's a doctor. doctor. He's a doctor. Uh, Paul, sorry, Paul Saladino was talking about like he takes the veggies out. Why? Because veggies have a self-defense so mechanism in them that can create inflammation in a lot of people. Most people don't know that, but that's actually true. You know, like eucalyptus, the second you pick it off the tree, it becomes poisonous. And what's funny is when you pick one, all the other trees around know about it. Uh, How interesting is right. that? Right. Uh, so, yeah. When I heard that, I was like, yeah. really? Veggies have, a, have a, a defense mechanism. Turns out plants don't want to be eaten either. Uh, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Why? Those damn but, plants. Um, so so they, they, they have a, a defense mechanism that can create inflammation. Well, it makes you look at a plant-based diet so differently, right? Right. So for, I'll give you an example. Onions. I don't like raw onions. I dislike raw onions my entire life. The taste, all that stuff, I cannot have. Jenna was cooking with a lot of onions. Cooked, they seem to be okay. But I, I think that it, I, I get an inflammatory response out of it. It changes my smell, which I don't like at all. So we, we cut the onions and we're going to see. But me, I feel like I hold water when I get too much of them. You might have... But it's also because I cook with a heavy spice. So it's, it's that... So we're going to see which ones. We're going to cut, the, we cut the, uh, the spice, the onion, the garlic. I'm going to let myself come down. Then I'll reintroduce the garlic, see what happens. Reintroduce the spice, see what happens. Because yeah. that's how you find out. I just like eating to be an experience. You know, you like you don't know if it's gonna be really. I hot hate my smell. Food. Like with the onion, I really don't like it. No. Like I really don't like my smell. It bothers me. Yeah, I'm yeah. very uh, sensitive to smell. That's my artistic stuff. Me is smell. It's not noise or stuff. It's noise a bit. Like the fucking dog, still alive. Um, <laughs> against my. We're moving in a Against month, my so. my wishes. Not I didn't do anything, but my wish were for <laughs> an accident. Um, Yes, thank God we're moving because I don't have to deal with that dog anymore. But the sm <laughs> smell is something that really bothers me. And uh, the onion does something uh, when it comes to that. And so the, um, 
An important part is to see veg vegetables. We all think it's like, oh, it's going to be good no matter what. No, you might get some infl inflammatory response out of that. On someone like Dr. Salad uh, Saladino, who has, um, I was going to say Sal Salahadin, but that's someone else. Salahadin, anybody? No, whatever. History, people. Jerusalem? No. Leader of the Muslim force. Salahadin? Oh, no, no, I don't anyway. know. <sighs> You will never understand. Um, not you, them. Um, where was I? Right. Uh, he has eczema. So for him, it's very easy. He gets plants, he gets eczema, so you can tell. My idea is that panic attacks are an autoimmune disease. You might end up triggering panic attacks of a high anxiety through simple inflammatory responses. Look at veggies as well. I'm not saying necessarily that's true, but look at veggies as well. Yeah, and then he puts the whole vegetarian idea completely differently. Right, so yeah, so I find uh, all those ideas differently. So that's why uh, very interesting. So that's why I want to do the the protocol on it because there is so many interesting stuff out of that. To finish this podcast, I wanted to bring the Paul Anderson diet. So Paul Anderson is one of the most interesting strength athletes of all time. First of all, he might be the greatest strength athletes of all time, uh, top three for sure. And one of the most interesting guys, he taught the Russians to squat. He was a squat prodigy, right? He, Tommy Kono say he squatted 900 for reps in front of him, uh, which is insane. Um, he was 5'6", 370, so a humongous individual, who jumped on a table a meter away from him, a meter high, for 10 reps. So that, I mean, the table, my goodness, I don't know how he resisted, but uh, that feat of strength alone is ridiculous. He won the Olympics, Olympic weightlifting, right? Within 18 months of training. There's a video that of him ridiculous. taking a 300-pound dumbbell and just pressing it twice. But like strict pressing it. Strict pressing it. Uh -huh, 300 pounds. One arm. Strict presses it for a double. Looked easy, too. He didn't even push press it. Just yeah, didn't push press it. Just bent it. Slightly bent. Strict press it twice. 300 pounds. One arm. Uh, he had the Anderson squat, which means he got under gallons of concrete and then lifted it off the ground. Weights. He had, he had the whole thing with blood flow and everything. It's yeah, read the books. It's that shit is fascinating. He's a good guy too. And the pastor, like an orphanage and the whole thing. Like he was a good guy. He was born uh, almost dying. He had a kidney problem, a genetic issue. I think he killed his sister as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there was a kidney ailment in the family, right? And he was born with that, which means he left the hospital when he was five weak as shit um, and the doctor told him don't give him protein he can't digest it and then he kept uh, asking his mom for it until she started to give him protein and his whole life his thing was protein 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 because he wanted to be big and strong right? and that he became so at some point in his book he even talks about drinking beef blood to get more protein in and stuff like that he could not digest well so he couldn't have solid food in his stomach so he went after a raw, a liquid diet mostly, and so, he would so he would drink raw eggs, like a lot of them, Ugh. beef blood. He would mix the two together. Uh, he went at it time and time and time again. He was a humongous dude, extremely strong. He's the godfather of powerlifting in the U.S. He's the one really who created uh, powerlifting. He set the the bench and stuff like that. And so when he won the Olymp the Olympic Games for Olympic weightlifting. He went to Russia uh, to squat, and then he said that he was repping 700 pounds, and the bar was started bending, and that bar is still in Russia in a museum of strength. The bar that Paul Anderson bent. And by the way, it's like this. <laughs> it was completely bent. He was so short and so big. So short, so big, so strong. He was, so strong. Anyway, but that, that so and then so he was having protein all the time, and he, like. After eating protein again, it becomes a little bit stale. I'm like, no sure, raw eggs and beef blood, I'm sure it's stale. So what he was, he was having up to a pint of honey a day. So his food was, he had a kidney issue, right? So one, maybe an autoimmune disease, I don't know exactly what he died, he died of that. I don't know exactly what he was, but you get the idea, right? What did he had? He had meat, organ meat, honey. Ah, interesting. Ah, interesting. Animal fats and uh, honey. So he back to that. And honey, why? Because it was liquid, because you didn't want to have solid food. The digestive system would not be good, which with his ailment would not be surprising. So he ended up with a carnivore diet and honey. 
How interesting is that? To deal with what most likely was an autoimmune disease, some kind of kidney ailment. It's crazy. Either or. The fact that he got so strong. So big. And so big while being so sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he pounded protein against the wish of the doctor, but he still, he made it to 40 something. I'm still cringing over the yeah. fact that he drank blood and ate oh, raw you have eggs. Oh, you have to read the book. When you read the diet, you go like, dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post all this on the module because it's too good not to read. But the, yeah, but the guy had ideas when he came to training. He was doing pistols, he was doing handstand push-ups. Again, when you weigh 370, handstand push-ups. But he push was doing handstand push-ups like yeah, yeah. easy no, reps. Plus uh, chest to the ground, not head to the ground, chest to the ground. And then push it. Yeah, and he was doing pistols at 370. Yeah, that's impressive shit. That's a strong man, by the way. It's a strong man doing pistols for sets of 10 on the table. Again, he jumped on the table a meter away from me, a meter high for sets of 10. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, it was all about blood flow. So for him, it's about getting a pump. So he was training with lighter weights but higher reps. It sounds like CrossFit. Read his books. Some of the workouts like, he, he yeah, put in. Yeah, CrossFit over. workouts. Yeah, he had a workout for the squat. We're doing max weight for thirty reps: twenty, ten, one. I've seen that CrossFit uh, that workout in CrossFit. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so he would so do cool. handstand push-ups because he wanted the blood the blood to get to uh, his shoulder. So he was doing reverse deadlift. With the, on the bench with a pulley and shit like that. Yeah, oh, he was so good. It, like, he um, invented his own training from A to Z. He didn't have a coach. Uh, and one of the strongest person, and there was no juice at the time, because he was in the 50s, 60s. Uh, that's when the steroids started to show up, but as, with his kidneys, I seriously doubt he took that. Uh, but he went to Russia, so you never know. But by the way, in Russia, the Russians loved him so much, found him so strong that they paid him to have kids with their athletes because they wanted the gene to be in the Russian population. I don't know that he said yes, but that's what the legend says. I believe that too. I totally believe it. Trap on to Russia. Shit. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was very interesting. But that's going to be the module on the protocol. Like, and then that will be our most uh, comprehensive version yet because I'm going to explain all that, but very much in two details. So. Fasting, veggies. Fasting, well, I don't fast. Janina fasts, but we're going to talk about fasting. We're going to talk about the carnivore diet. We're going to talk about why the fruits compared to insulin, why the honey, all that stuff, the Paul Anderson diet, all that stuff in details. But the whole point will be how do we make this side of things, nutrition, as anti inflammatory as possible. Why? Because anxiety, immune. Dif immune, why? Because affective immunology. That's and then why. inflammation is going to come into all of this, right? Well, affective immunology, yeah. which is what this is. Like affective immunology tells us we should try to lower inflammation from that as much as we can. So, how can we eat to lower inflammation? Therefore, how can we eat to lower anxiety? That will be a big part of the module. Eating for anxiety. Finally, it's there, it's ready. Sounds exciting. See you guys soon. Bye.